Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy, fantasy novels, and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we are talking about the spell Control Water. This is one of those spells that, you know, I feel like I should have a bunch of fun, stupid things to do, but for the life of me, I cannot get excited about this one. Control Water to me feels like a... It gives you this idea of like you get to mess around with a whole bunch of water and you get to do stuff with it. But that's really what shape water does. And this is more of just like a here are some physics things that you can do with water, like change its direction and stuff. Um, or be Moses, I guess. Um, so <laughs> very small Moses. <laughs> very small Moses. Uh, this is a four level transmutation spell. Uh, it takes an action to cast three to three hundred feet. That's actually kind of neat. Like the range of three hundred feet is big. This is twice the range of like a short, like the short range of a longbow. It's a big distance. Um, it's a city block, right? Uh, you need a, a drop of water and a pinch of dust to cast it. Verbal somatic material, concentration 10 minutes. Concentration, bummer. Anyway, until the spell ends, you control any freestanding water inside of an area you choose that is a cube of up to 100 feet on a side. You can choose from any of the following effects when you cast the spell. As an action to your turn, you can repeat the same effect or choose a different one. So this lets you like grab bag any of the following of these effects. There are four of them. There is flood, part water, redirect flow, and whirlpool. Flood, you cause the water level of all standing water in the area to rise as much as 20 feet. If that area includes a shore, the flooding water spills over onto dry land. If you choose an area in a large body of water, you create a 20-foot tall wave that travels from one side of the area to the other and crashes down. So notably, this is functionally two different modes, right? It does different things depending on the circumstances. It's either a wave or flood. And then also goes any huge or smaller vehicles the wave pushes are carried with it to either side. Any huge or smaller vehicles struck by the wave have uh, a 25% chance of capsizing, etc., etc., etc. It gets really in detail here. I don't know why it does. They could have cut like 30% of this text and it'd be exactly the same because the DMs would just figure that out. But anyway, moving <laughs> forward. <laughs> well, it's giving you rules. Yeah, but it, it if it didn't say... give you rules, you just make shit up. That's that's exactly. that's D and D. That's ninety percent of D and D exactly. So, uh, literally, they could have said if you choose an area that's a large body of water, make a twenty foot wave instead, and then it'd be like, what happens with the ships? They sometimes capsize. They get pushed around. You figure it out. Uh, you <laughs> do it on the day. That's how that's how D and D works. Reverse gravity is shorter than this. Um, anyway, part water is the next one. You choose water in an area to move apart and create a trench. The trench extends across the spell's area, which is up to three hundred feet, which is neat. Uh, and the separated water forms a wall to either side. The trench remains until the spell ends, or you choose a different effect, which means you can bury the Egyptians in the water if you want to. Um, the water slows Billy slowly fills the trench over the course of the next round. Um, so, I mean, like, it's not immediate, like, dunkage, but it's, like, a pretty quick whoosh, back up. Because it's 300 feet. This is a huge, this yeah. is going to be huge. Uh, anyway, that's part water. That's one you're almost never using. Um, redirect flow. You cause water flowing in an area to move in a different direction. Even if the water is flowing over obstacles, up walls, or in other unlikely directions. So you can just be like, that way. This one's super cool. I don't know how you use it. <laughs> um, whirlpool. The effect requires a body of water at least 50 feet 50 feet square and 25 deep. At least 50 foot square. 25 deep. I feel like I'm reading grammatically something wrong, but I probably skipped a word. It's fine. You cause a whirlpool to form in the center of that area, so the 50 foot square area. Uh, that's 25 feet deep. We figured it out. Um, the whirlpool forms a vortex 5 feet wide at the space, up to 50 feet wide at the top, 25 feet tall. Big vortex is what's important here. Any creature in the object within it, any creature or object in the water within 25 feet of the vortex, so going out further from it, is pulled 10 feet towards it. No saves. Notably, they just are pulled 10 feet towards it, so that they're within 10 feet of it, they're yoinked into the vortex. Uh, a creature can swim away from the vortex, making a strength athletics check against your spells ADC. That's going to have to be on its turn, though. Um, I think. I'm pretty sure. I'm like 90% sure. Mm -hmm. I might be wrong. It might be something that happens in that moment, but it should be a save if that's the case. doesn't matter. We're moving forward. Uh, when a creature enters the vortex for the first time on its turn or starts it there, it makes a strength saving throw on a failed save. It takes 2d8 bludgeoning damage, and it's caught in the vortex until the spell ends. On a successful save, the creature takes half damage and it isn't caught in the vortex. The creature caught in the vortex can use its action to swim away from the vortex as described above, but has disadvantage on the strength athletic check to do so. So this mentions it being an action. I would assume that's how it works on the, in the game. It's on your turn. You can make the action to do the thing. Uh, the first time each turn that an object enters the vortex, it takes 2d8 bludgeoning damage. Each round, it remains in the vortex. This is super notable for ships. Basically, you put a vortex whirlpool down, and ships are going to have a really bad time. I just spat a lot of words yeah. for what is really two notable effects. Um, I think 
whirlpool is neat in the aquatic setting where you're putting a whirlpool down and hitting some ships with it you're you're causing a bit of a problem for a big area this is a four level spell so we're in the mid-tier here um i think that 2d8 damage is kind of minuscule if you're doing it against creatures this is a decent area of effect damaging though it also like pulls them in and they get like sucked towards the center of it consistently which is neat um it also like it's repeatable the 2d8 damage isn't a lot to write up about, but it also being an area of condition can be interesting. Uh, I think if you're in a lot of those circumstances, the size of the body of water is going to make a great deal of difference as to whether or not it's even usable, because a lot of the time you don't want this because it'll just kill the whole party too, and that's mm. not particularly ineffective. It's just mainly a high chaos strategy that makes the counter go way longer than it needs to. <laughs> so Whirlpool, I'm lukewarm on. Redirect Flow sounds cool. I have no idea how or when you can make this good. Maybe you like, Redirect Flow Water, and I'm going to be a firefighter now, and you could have just done that with Shape Water, and that's a cantrip. Um, then there's <laughs> Flood, which is the other mode, and uh, it just raises the water by 20 feet, or you make a wave. The wave is kind of cool, but is it better than Whirlpool? Maybe? I don't know. What are your thoughts, Bob? Flood. If you're stuck at the bottom of a well. 20 feet up. Top. Yep. And you got 10 more minutes of uh, <laughs> control water, do what you want with after you're out. That's Also, uh, yeah, you, uh, you got a bunch of sludge or dead bodies or whatever. You You clean your well. Lovely. <laughs> you flush out the well of the dead bodies that's yeah. what the, i like how it always comes back to like this is your city planning moment Be like oh this would make actually a really great tool for sewage this is exactly how we should be running all of our sewer lines is just waves of water pushing out all the garbage you know breaking those stalls and big, yep absolutely i mean yeah that's uh this is where my mind goes for a spell it's like controlling water i think they could have done a lot more with a lot less it feels like there's a lot of words here that hamstring this in a way that's like this does a very specific thing and it has a lot of rules and i didn't even read all of them because i'm like i don't you get the point i don't need to keep running reading these words i'm gonna be talking for 20 minutes or 10 minutes about this anyway like there's a lot of words here that don't they're not that interesting they don't add much to the spell effect and they're not particularly powerful like how good is raising 300 feet 20 feet up is interesting it's neat you can do that to like flood some docks create some panic it has a pretty big impact in a very specific setting in a moment whenever you would need that specific effect though i don't know it would like cause a lot of havoc cause a lot of confusion that's interesting i don't know how often it's going to be something that you're going to find to be useful though part water is like a. Uh, I guess we have now figured out a way to go across this small river yeah i'm not here for that um <laughs> You can close it behind you, I guess. Yeah. Okay, you're being pursued on land. You go quick, control water, part the Red Sea, we go through, we close it over around. Sure, that seems like a... I'm struggling to see other use cases for part water. Like, can you think of any? No. Um, that's... I feel that that's what it's for. I mean, I'm just like you, just keep going back to Moses. That's where we've seen water parted. That's what he did. and uh, That's what it does. I mean, maybe if you're you lost your keys or something <laughs> i don't know sure <laughs> you drop your cell phone and you're just like <laughs> part of the water and there it is yeah oh <laughs> uh, yeah uh redirect flow i think is the coolest of these which is weird because whirlpool's right below it but like that's where you like you got a flowing river and you get like you point somewhere else and it goes that direction like a fire hose for a little bit that's kind of neat like maybe you use this to just start dumping a bunch of water into like a lower elevation fort or something um is that good probably not and it, it seems like not that good it's 10 minutes of short it, though. term irrigation <laughs> <laughs> right like you could ride it so like conceivably you use this as like propulsion to go up somewhere but then you have to run it like i do wonder so this is the one that has the least amount of text and the water moves as you direct it until you get to the edge of the spell so this means hypothetically when you're redirecting flow, you can move up to the 300-foot area with the water. So you could just, like, everyone get in the canoe, and the water is like a fly, right? Where it takes you up 300 feet within wherever the, the range of the spell is. So it can put you some pretty wacky places. This is the most control water feel-like effect to me. Um, it does require moving water. So it needs flowing water, it specifies, which is stupid. And I don't, I think that text shouldn't be there. I don't think flowing is, should be a requirement of this effect. Um... 
it does lead to like then the really fun question of this poor gnomish village that just happens to be nearby and they see what are those adventurers doing where the river why is our river stop what's happening and then it just starts raining on them as they're you know, launching the water to get up some high <laughs> cliff or something that's pretty cute um i think this is the coolest effect this is the fact that i would take it for but i'm not taking the spell um and then finally whirlpool like whirlpool is just ship for combat that's what it's for yeah. and if you're in that niche it's pretty good because you like you're gonna start really screwing with the placement and ability for ships to do certain things um you're gonna sink some things really easily and fast you'll also sink things with the wave which is pretty good like that that feels like this is where the spell shines where i'd actually want it um beyond that though it's a pretty steep requirement to be in specifically an aquatic environment to have this spell have a damaging effect and the damage like i said is kind of me so i don't know i don't know bob i don't know it's weird that the, the different effects are so varied in power like all right, I could sink a ship or I could cross a river safely. <laughs> yeah, right. Or I could water my plants with mm-hmm. a river. Like, that's what it, uh, it feels like it's a cantrip or it's sinking, it's like winning a naval fight, right? Yeah. Like, that's like where these two modes are, which is wild. Um, I think this spell could have afforded to be more spells at lower levels. I think we got a whirlpool spell that does this job better, I think. I don't think we need this version of whirlpool anymore. Um, I think redirect flow could be its own really cool thing. Maybe like a second level spell that lets you control water in this exact way would be sweet. And it would definitely be cheap enough where I'd be like, yeah, that's a cool effect. And it's still hyper niche. You still have to find running water or whatever. Um, that's why you could take that text out. I'd be happier too. But like for a fourth level spell slot, ooh, I don't know. I don't know about that. That seems really risky and not useful enough for the cost. Part water is really not worth the cost. Flood is neat. But again, it's like one specific scenario is good with it. I, I don't Unless know. Unless you're stuck at the bottom of the well. <laughs> because the jump spell doesn't <laughs> exist. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I went into this video ready to fail. I um, I just can't get excited about control water. It's really I've got, hard. I've got a mental block. There's some cool things to do with redirect flow, and that's about it. Oh no, I do... I, I, I fully expect the uh, commenters to to let me know the amazing ways they've used this spell. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will say, in reply, you're right. That's great. Still not excited about it. It's hard to get excited about something this niche, right? Like this is something you cast three times, if that, a campaign, and are like, wow, that was sweet. You might cast a couple more times and be like, that was nothing. Um, and then the rest of the time is just sitting on your character sheet and you're like, I don't know why I prepared this. Um, so, I mean, at least, like, for the clerics and druids out there, this is a prepared spell. And, like, wizards have a huge spell book anyway, so it's not, like, a huge order for them to put this together in there. This is a relatively, like, for the prepared casters, oh, we're going on a water adventure? Got it. We're doing the pirate ship thing? Sweet. Control water. That's kind of where I see this extent stopping. And you know what? that's fine. It's probably fine to have spells that are aimed at that one specific setting. This does a billion things for that one specific setting. In that one environment, this is probably worth this a lot. Outside of that, are you going down a lot of tributaries or something? Mm. I'm not planning to. Yeah, right? All right, well, uh, commenters, do do my, do my our job. Let us know what what we missed and uh... Listen, i i did my job i gave plenty of interesting ish ideas i've talked about moses at least three times and <laughs> i mentioned lifting canoe and watering some gnomes those both count <laughs> yeah well i dropped the ball <laughs> and that's fine. i'm okay with that yeah sometimes you're just here for control water to not be excited i think that's an endorsement of control water in itself too i think that's valuable I think this is a three. I think it's a mediocre spell that'll have a few use cases where it's like, yeah, that was pretty good, and that's about it. Yeah, I'm, I'll give it a, I'll give it a two. I don't hate it. I just, mm. yeah, I'm probably never going to use it. Yeah, same. All right. Well, that was Control Water. Commenters, let us know what you think. And thank you, Sam, and thank you everyone for joining us. We will see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it, a gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. 
And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of The Spell, and other fun things.